Today we're going to be talking about a common injury we see in sports as well as in auto accidents, and that's whiplash. W for whiplash. The mechanism of injury for a whiplash injury involves hyperflexion and hyperextension type movements. If you are rear-ended in a car, most likely you're starting off in position one. Rear-ended in the car, your head is going to whip backwards into position two, causing a hyperextension type injury. So there's going to be a stretching in the front of the spine and a compression in the back of the spine. After that movement, your head is going to whip forward into position three, which is going to be a hyperflexion movement, where there's going to be stretching towards the back of the spine and compression into the front of the spine. Now whiplash can also occur if you're hit head on, just the movements would reverse. And it can also happen if you get hit from the side or at an angle, just the head would uh, move towards the direction of force and then away from the direction of force. And that's the typical mechanism of what a whiplash injury is. With whiplash injuries, there's gonna be stretching of ligaments, muscles, tendons, uh, as well as compression of those ligaments, muscles, tendons, and joints, as well as the disc tissue and everything else that's in the cervical spine region. Another thing we don't want to forget is what's happening to the brain during a whiplash injury. So if there is any type of whiplash injury that occurs, whether it's from a sport or an auto accident or a significant uh, fall, then we also want to consider concussion because the brain moves forward and back. And that is also the mechanism of concussion where the brain's jarred in those movements. So we want to do a concussion protocol and make sure that the person doesn't also have a concussion along with a whiplash injury. Looking at the different things that can get injured during a whiplash injury, here on the left hand side, we can see that there are ligaments, these white structures in between the joints of the cervical spine and they can be torn. So you can have a ligamentous tear and that would be part of the sprain strain injury in a whiplash injury. We also have muscles that cover all these bones in these joints, both in the front sides and back. So those muscles can also be damaged the same way that the ligaments are damaged. We can see here the picture on the right, it lists off everything that can be damaged in a whiplash injury. So we have the cervical spine. Within the cervical spine, we have multiple joints and also bone that can be damaged. We have the discs, which are within, in between the vertebra that can be damaged. The nerves that can have a compression type injury um, or a stretching type injury. Ligaments, muscles, and tendons also can be injured during a whiplash type injury. So we want to look at all of these different structures when we're doing an exam on someone that has had a whiplash injury to see what structures are damaged and where we need to start from a rehab standpoint. Oftentimes because these ligaments, muscles, and tendons are stretched too far, then we need to do a lot of stabilization to this area to help with the initial recovery.